When Julia reached out to commission this setting of Douglas's speech, I confess I'd been contemplating setting it for a while, so I jumped at the chance, but I was also strangely hesitant. And I think the main reason is that there is a hesitancy that exists in the speech. There are contradictory threads and tributaries kind of roiling around in a mix in this speech. And I think it makes sense because Douglas himself was so complicated. But there is both this rolling momentum gathering, momentous cadence that we've come to expect from black orators and preachers kind of right alongside this sort of rhetoric that comes straight from Dryden and Pope. And I could, in my own mind, come up with possible reasonings for that. But because of all of the different elements in this speech, all the different allusions and literary references, I had to heavily edit the text, and so it was quite a work, trying to find a way to honor this text while also dissecting it. And eventually I was able to come to a text that made sense to set for me, and then it was just a simple matter of listening to the rhythm and the pitch inherent in the words that Douglas assembled because he had, as all great orators do, an incredible ear. And so the rhythm of the first few notes in the piano and the voice are just straight from reading the text, as are the pitches. The pitches came to me through just listening to and reading myself the lines that Douglas wrote. I hope that listeners can find a quote from a spiritual, one of my favorites, about halfway through the song. Because I'm me, I couldn't resist putting a spiritual in there, and I hope that y'all can not only find it, but figure out what it is. But most of all, I hope that the message that Douglas delivers rings out purely, even down through the generations and the years in between him and us. And I hope that we actually do something about it.